This week, we are looking at an on-ear pair of studio monitor headphones. I'm talking about the Audio-Technica ATH M60X. Hello and welcome back to David talking tech and audio. If you've already subscribed, thank you. And if you've yet so to do, the buttons are just down there. And if you could drop me a like, maybe, it really helps me and the channel out. So this week, as I mentioned, we have got these, the Audio-Technica closed back on-ear monitor studio headphones, the ATH M60Xs. And uh, it's the first time on this channel, at least, that I've reviewed a pair of on-ear headphones. So it'd be interesting to see how they get on. And as normal, we're gonna look at all sorts of things, the build quality, what they sound like, of course. I was <laughs> criticized recently for not spending enough time on how the headphones sound. So I promise you I'll try and spend longer on that this week. Um, so yes, we're gonna look at the build quality, the sound, and my general thoughts on these mid-price on-ear headphones. So let's have a little look what you get in the box. That's as good a place to start as any, I guess, isn't it? You get three cables. You get a short straight cable, You get, uh, which is around about one and a half meters. That's about three and a half meters, another straight cable, and then you get what I call the studio cable, the coiled cable. They come with just one adapter. It used to be two, reading on the early specs. We get just one 6.35 millimeter adapter, gold plated, so that'll fit into any DAC or audio interface. And the cables themselves are detachable, as you can tell from the headphones, but it is a proprietary snap and fit that uh, Audio Technica use. So you just line them up in their twist and fit. It's great they're interchangeable, but they are proprietary, which means, of course, that if you do want to get more cables, they're gonna have to be genuine. Audio Technica parts. There is the Audio Technica name on the top of the headband. I don't know if you can quite see that from there. It's a thinnish headband, uh, much more narrow than I have been used to. The foam on the top is again, skinny and not particularly well padded. It says memory foam, but there's not much padding there. You can probably see there's not an awful lot of depth to it. On the ear cups, uh, again, memory foam. It feels quite a cheap, if I'm honest, kind of leatherette covering to them. There's not much space between the cup and the driver, so it could be that the drivers end up sitting on my ears, which I'm not particularly keen about. There are metal yokes there, but even the mechanisms themselves are quite sloppy. There's not much resistance to them. I've been breaking these in for about a week, but um, they were like that out of the box, so not much resistance. I think they'd stay put once you've got them set for yourself. Uh, for use during the day on the studio. Uh, there's not much rotation on the ear cups themselves. They certainly don't fold flat, as you can see, minimal rotation there. Uh, so if you were gonna wear them with your phone and out and about, you can't fold the headphones or the cups flat, which is a shame. That would have been a nice little touch, I think. Uh, and again, it would have made them easier to carry in the pouch as well, but they don't fold flat. So there's minimal movement to those, quite a lot of expansion on the head. There's not that much resistance to them. I'd rather, I don't know about you, but I like quite a tight fit with the headband. I like to feel some resistance there and there's not much when you put those on. Um, they are on ear and for on ear headphones, the drivers are almost touching my ears, as I say, because there's not that much padding on the cup. So they could perhaps have done with putting more padding on there. That would have been more comfortable. But as for the comfort of being on ear, Yes, they're not too bad. You can see they're a reasonable size. They fit nicely on the ear. I'm not the biggest fan of on-ear headphones, but uh, to be honest, these feel reasonably comfortable. So if I was going to spend a good few hours in them, I don't think they'd be too uncomfortable. So that's what you get in the box, my initial impressions of the quality of them. Weight-wise, they're only around about 220 grams, so they're quite a light pair of headphones. So from that point of view, certainly if you're going to be wearing them out and about, you haven't got very heavy headphones to carry about. Um, they are very transportable by their sheer size. As you can tell, the ear cups are only just big enough to go on the ear. So they are a very nice transportable pair of headphones. Um, but all over, they feel just a little bit light for regular studio work. I like something a little bit more robust, but um, we'll be looking obviously in a little while's time at what the sound is and trying to get into the actual nuts and bolts of how these sound. That is after all while you're here. But uh, first impressions, they're okay but uh, they don't feel quality. And in a very, very competitively priced market, uh, there's a link down below where I bought these from. It is an affiliate link, so if you do decide to buy a pair, I get a couple of pence and it really helps me and the channel out. But um, they're going for around about 150 pounds at the moment. So it's a very competitive price point with a lot of great headphones out there. Of course, my favorite Bayer Dynamics have got some headphones in that kind of price range. So they're in a very, very tight competitive price range, but we'll come down to the sound in a minute and see what they sound like, shall we? These headphones have passive noise cancelling, low impedance, 45 ohm large aperture drivers and aluminium voice clad coils to them. 
So let's talk about the sound a little bit, shall we? Uh, something I was criticised for on a recent video, not talking enough about the sound, so I'll promise you I'll try and put that to rights this week. Um, they are monitor headphones, that's why they're called M60s, the M standing for monitor. And if you're new to the headphone game, the idea of a monitor headphone is that it's not particularly coloured. So with commercial headphones, end user headphones, they've got probably a lot of EQ on them, a lot of bass, and quite a lot of treble. They're made to sound very commercial, very punchy, certainly normally with a lot of bass. With monitor headphones, the whole idea is that I, or whoever is wearing these and making the audio, you want to hear a very faithful reproduction of what I am delivering to you as the end user with the mastered file. So with these, I'm not looking to hear enhanced basses, trebles, mids. It needs to be a fairly flat reference sound. Now, half of the skill of wearing good headphones is getting to know your headphones. There is this old idea of breaking headphones in, which to a degree is true. Certainly they begin to form to the, the shape of your head more, the ear cups bend into your ears more. And I think even the drivers somehow seem to warm up, but new headphones will still give you a good result. The trouble of wearing new headphones immediately, and why I would suggest you wouldn't do it if you had a project, is you're not sure of those headphones. I've spent a couple of weeks with these headphones, wearing them, getting ready for this video, trying to understand the sound to them, sound stage to them, what they're delivering. But as I say, these are monitor headphones, so they're not meant to be a commercial sound. But with that in mind, it's worth just talking about how I found they delivered. So it is important to once again mention these are on-ear headphones. So you have in-ear headphones, such as AirPods. You have on-ear, they sit on top of the ear, and of course, over-the-ear headphones, which the cups go entirely around the ear. Now with these, because they're on-ear, They've actually got a surprisingly good sound stage to them. I was quite pleasantly surprised by how good they sound. They let in a reasonable amount of ambience from your room, so you get a fair amount of air and ambient sounds coming through, which does help because I tend to find if I'm mastering something, I don't want to be isolated to the point where there's no outside, in just the air and noise of the room. You need something to make the sound almost real, if that makes sense. So from that point of view, they did deliver quite well. Um, I found that the mids were the biggest problem that I had. With some of the headphones I've had on the channel recently, where they've all won out is with the vocal delivery. They've been a really punchy, direct vocal. You almost feel it in the center of the chest. The vocals are coming right to you. With these, I did find that the vocals are missing slightly. And I one of the tracks, that I, I, as you know, I use two tracks particularly for referencing. And in fact, this time round, I also used a vocal track, a spoken word track from the actor Richard Burton. Um, I listened to some spoken word because I wanted to hear the breath delivery and what a very dry corded voice was like. And what I found was that the vocals on these needed a little bit of enhancement. The mids seemed very, very scooped out. On one of the tracks I was listening to, the lead vocal was not that well differentiated from the BVs, from the backing vocalists. It all kind of melded into one pot. So the delivery on those mids, lower mids, wasn't the best. I popped it into audition. I just notched up a frequency around about 300 hertz, only by about 10 to 12 dB. And that did make a great deal of difference. Suddenly the vocals were popping that little bit more. But obviously the idea of these is that they should be delivering a reference to me. I shouldn't be looking to enhance a sound. And that track I'm talking about was actually a mastered file direct from the artist themselves before it went to CD pressing. So it was an impeccable audio source that I was using. Uh, but I still found on these headphones, and it's a track I know very, very well, and every breath of the track just needed enhancing slightly. Overall, the sound for me was a little bit of a miss, apart from the fact that the, the lower mids were scooped out, well, not scooped out, almost missing to some degree, muddy. There wasn't clarity to them. Uh, the stereo separation wasn't too bad. There wasn't much in the way of any bass delivery or sub-bass delivery, which meant that the whole track had no body to it. It's the best way I can try to describe it. Um, the whole sound on them was just wanting it seemed that it needed something in the soundstage. When, when Audio-Technica were engineering these, I felt perhaps they needed something just to give me a little bit more of a reference monitor. It seemed to be lacking pretty much across the range, definitely in those lower mids with the vocal delivery, it was certainly missing. But as I say, even with some kind of subtle sub bass, it was just missing there. So depending on the kind of music that you're working on, you might be disappointed with the sound of these possibly. 
Um, if you're working with a dry vocal, as I said, that's why I put on a spoken word, that was fine. Again, I could have done with a little bit more sparkle to the voice, but it was a very dry delivered track that I was listening to, a very dry delivered vocal, a spoken book. They delivered that well, but as soon as it's mixed in with any kind of music, I found that the vocal ranges just weren't there for me. Uh, I'm used to a certain kind of sound when it comes to vocal. I know what I'm looking for, and sadly, with these, it just wasn't there. I don't think it's because they're on ear at all. I think it's just the delivery. And if you are on location, for instance, if you're shooting on set, these headphones would probably do you ever so well. They are reasonably comfortable, but the sound on them, uh, compared to the M50s that I wore a little while ago, actually, I was just a little disappointed in these. I found them wanting, but let me know if you worn these, what do you think? I'd be interested to know what your take is on these and what have you compared them to? Obviously, as you know, I love Bayer's, so I've been comparing these over the last couple of weeks to Bayer Dynamics, and I don't think that's unfair. They're in a very similar price point, a very similar delivery. They're both monitoring reference headphones, so I think putting those two sets of headphones up against one another was fair enough. But these, for me, didn't really deliver what I was hoping they would. I decided to get these for the channel because uh, a couple of people I know in the industry really rate these headphones as studio monitor headphones, these M60s. But for me, uh, they just kind of missed the mark a little bit. But as I say, if you've used them, do let me know. I'd be really interested to know what you thought of them. So are these headphones for you? Well, as I say, it depends on how often you're using them. If you're using them for many hours at a time, I'm not a big fan of on-ear headphones. That's a mouthful, <laughs> on-ear headphones. Um, just because I prefer over-the-ear headphones. But for on-ear headphones, they're actually pretty comfortable. And as I say, they do allow a pleasant amount of room ambience in while you're sitting working with them. So from that point of view, they're good. Uh, if you're working with anything that is, you're expecting to deliver a lot of vocals, backing vocals, uh, over with clearly a music mix, and particularly if your music mix is quite melodic, if it's... Uh, a rhythm section, for instance, behind those, I think you might struggle slightly. Um, I wouldn't enjoy working with these on that kind of material. On a podcast, they'd be absolutely fine. If I was listening to one of my own podcasts, and I am going to be starting a podcast for this channel soon, by the way, so um, I'll let you know more about that when it's out. But if I was working just on a podcast, then, yeah, for that purpose, these would be fine. But for music and vocal, they wouldn't be my headphone of choice. Uh, as I say, I have left a link down below if you want to try using these. It's in the comments. And I'd be really interested to know what you make of them. So be wary is all I'd say. Be cautious and think about what you're going to be using your headphones for because they're not inexpensive. £150 a pair of headphones is by no means a bargain set of headphones. So just be thoughtful and careful of what your end use is and what you're hoping to use these headphones for. If you've got a few spare moments, I'd really appreciate it if you could pop over to my website, talkingtechandaudio.com. Just leave me your email address in the little subscription box that pops up. And as soon as I've got enough details, I'll be uh, doing a midweek video, just bringing you behind the scenes here in the studio, talking about what ideas are coming up, what videos be coming up and how my week's been, just to really a general catch up. So don't forget, talkingtechandaudio.com is the place you need to go for that. If you haven't subscribed yet, it really honestly would help me and the channel out if you could and drop a like on this video if you're enjoying the output as well. And again, at the end of this video, I'll be putting up a link where you can watch a video where I compared the Bayer Dynamic 700 Pro Xs up against the legendary Sony 7506s. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you on the next one.